Hello people, in this video we want to focus on papillary carcinoma of thyroid. So basically we are talking about what today? We are talking about the thyroid gland. Right? Today we are talking about the thyroid gland. And uh, what are we talking about? Carcinoma. That is a malignant condition of the thyroid gland. And here we are talking about what? The papillary carcinoma of thyroid gland. So basically there are so many carcinomas of thyroid, like papillary carcinoma of thyroid, follicular uh, carcinoma is there of thyroid, medullary carcinoma of thyroid is there, right? You have medullary carcinoma of thyroid, then you have anaplastic carcinoma, so many types of carcinomas are there. Today we are discussing only papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Remember, even medullary carcinoma of thyroid is important for exam, okay? So basically, this is the most co common one, papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Try to remember P is here, papillary carcinoma of thyroid. It's very popular, right? It affects uh, P or P. Remember P or P, okay? So if it affects females a lot, so if the cells of origin here is follicular cells. So follicular cells are the uh, cause here. Then you, here you will have papillary pattern. That's why it is called papillary carcinoma of thyroid, remember? Then you have... Um, a good prognosis so that's a good point here so another p here that is good prognosis okay so remember inside the thyroid gland we are talking about some seeing some papillary structures like this and whenever there are papillary structures like this you can suspect a papillary carcinoma of the thyroid okay so there are a lot of things to know pay attention here it's the most common type of thyroid carcinoma it comprises a lot of cases it's a very common, it's a malignant condition. You can say it is malignant, right? You know it is malignant because it is carcinoma. It's coming from the follicular cells and what you will see, it will present as asymptomatic solitary nodule. So solitary nodule here, this is a solitary nodule here and uh, cervical lymph nodes, the regional lymph nodes can be involved. So basically these will be asymptomatic, there won't be any pain, there will be solitary nodules, multifocal, there will be a lot of uh, foci, multifocal and the regional lymph nodes can be affected. Here the cervical lymph nodes can be affected. Local metastasis or regional metastasis is very common in papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Here you should remember that there will be cervical lymphadenopathy, correct? And sometimes the thyroid tissue itself can be present in the lateral cervical lymph node. So the... Uh, in the lateral cervical lymph node, you can find the thyroid tissue. That is what is called as lateral aberrant thyroid. What is lateral aberrant thyroid? That means the thyroid tissue is in the lateral cervical lymph node. Okay. So this is a gross guys uh, of uh, papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Just look at it. Then we will discuss the theory okay so here they are saying the cut surface of the enlarged thyroid gland shows a single nodule separated from the rest of the thyroid parenchyma by incomplete fibrous septa the nodule is gray white soft and shows grossly visible papillary pattern even grossly they are able to see papillary pattern okay so let's move on to the gross now so basically morphological features gross, what you should know here, it is a solitary multifocal lesion, I already told you, the lesion will contain fibrosis and calcification, they are often cystic, right, and uh, they can be up to 10 centimeter in diameter, okay, and uh, when you cut it, you will see grayish white hard scar, like why is it hard here, because they are mentioning here many times that there is calcification, fibrosis, so obviously it will be hard, right. And sometimes it can become uh, into a cyst, so that you can call it as papillary cyst adenocarcinoma of thyroid. Currently, we are just saying papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Okay, that was the gross. Okay, then microscopy, guys. Microscopy, basically, look at the microscopy we have drawn. If you see what we have drawn, it will be easy to understand. This is the normal thyroid tissue. You have the follicular cells with the colloid in the center. Right now, you have, here you see a papillary pattern, papillary architecture. Then here you have uh, a kind of clear cell ground glass appearance. Um, correct? We will read about them. Here you see a lot of calcification. These are samoma bodies, right? Calcification. Then here you see a lot of blood vessels, right? In the center. So some nucleus, no? Like uh, they have groove. So like coffee bean. Right, nuclear grooves are there. You can draw a lot of cells like this. You can draw clears. Then you can draw even with inclusions. Okay. 
even with inclusions, intranuclear inclusions. Okay. So we'll read about all this. So let's go back to the microscopy. So basically you will see papillary pattern, right? That is what you're supposed to see. Fibrovascular stalk. These are important words to write. Fibrovascular stalk, papillary pattern. So there is papillary pattern which you saw. There is fibrovascular stalk covered by a single layer of tumor cells. So the tumor cells, basically the tumor cells are there, single layer, which are covering this fibrovascular stalk. The papillae are often comprised, uh, accompanied by follicles. Tumor cells, the tumor cells have uh, nuclear features, dispersed nuclear chromatin. So the nuclear chromatin has dispersed. So like if this is a nucleus normal with all the chromatin, the nuclear chromatin here has dispersed. So in the middle, the nucleus, only the nucleus they are talking about, the nucleus of the tumor cell, it will have a ground glass appearance, ground glass appearance or optically it is clear appearance, okay, it has, it is uh, having clear appearance, okay, remember that, the nucleus, we are talking about the nucleus, let's put it in purple weight. So this is how the nucleus will look, ground glass appearance. So basically the nuclei of these papillary carcinoma cells, they will have dispersed chromatin. That is why it will have this ground glass appearance. It imparts an optically clear or empty appearance, giving rise to this designation of ground glass or it can also be called as orphan any eye nuclei. What is it? Orphan any eye nuclei. Orphan any eye nuclei. Okay. Then there can be imaginations of the cytoplasms which gives it an appearance of intranuclear inclusions but there are actually no intranuclear inclusions, they are pseudo inclusions. There even can be an intranuclear groove because of this imagination of cytoplasm, it looks like an intranuclear inclusion or it looks like an intranuclear groove. We told you right, like coffee beans you will draw like this. The diagnosis of papillary carcinoma is made based on these nuclear features. Even if papillary structure is not there, if they see these orphan anii, nuclei, etc., they can diagnose, they can diagnose a papillary carcinoma of thyroid. How's it going so far, guys? So we are done with the gross. Gross you saw solitary multifoci nodules. There can be unilateral, there can be a uh, lateral aberrant thyroid, they can spread to the cervical lymph nodes, to the regional lymph nodes, there can be cervical lymphadenopathy. Microscopy, you saw there can be papillary architecture, tumor cells which are lining these, even follicular cells can be there. Then these tumor cells will have these nucleus which are having clear uh, appearance, optically clear appearance because the chromatin has dispersed. So basically in what will happen if this is the cell, the nucleus basically will have a clear appearance because the chromatin has dispersed. So it will have an orphan any eye nucleus or a ground glass appearance. Okay. So uh, the cytoplasm can also invaginate into this nucleus giving an appearance of inclusion but it is actually pseudo inclusion and even the nucleus will have a intra, can have an intranuclear groove. It just appears like that because of the imagination of the cytoplasm. So these are the features of uh, papillary carcinoma of thyroid and microscopy. Okay. Samoma bodies also you have to draw concentric calcified spherules will be there. Okay. Samoma bodies. Remember samoma bodies. So this is how you will draw. Remember these intranuclear inclusions are not actual inclusions. They are pseudo inclusions. So let's correct this here pseudo intranuclear inclusions this is because of the because of the invagination of cytoplasm because of invagination of cytoplasm okay guys don't sleep wake up because of invagination of cytoplasm and also remember that this is having a ground glass they will call it as ground glass appearance right the Clear cells. Have you marked the clear cells anywhere? Clear cells, they have not marked it all. Wait, we'll mark it here. Let's say this is a ground glass appearance. Ground glass appearance or orphan any eye appearance. 
of nucleus okay because the chromatin has dispersed okay is this clear guys so you should write this orphan anii appearance ground glass appearance papillary carcinoma of thyroid this is the malignant condition of um, what thyroid guys wake up guys uh, there are a few variants of uh, this papillary carcinoma of thyroid listen to it Okay, thank you so much. So basically, there are three variants, guys. Try to remember in papillary carcinoma of thyroid, you can have so many variants. There will be follicular variant, tall cell variant, and diffuse sclerosing variant. Next, moving on. Prognosis is good. You already have seen this. The survival rate is uh, 95%. 10 year survival rate is 95%. Okay. So that's all about uh, papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Basically, one thing, yeah, radiation. If there's a, it's related to radiation. Any max exposure to radiation, there'll be high risk to papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Genetic alterations they have mentioned here. Ret gene overexpression. So this is a what proto oncogene, right? So all these they have mentioned. You can just mention ret gene overexpression. That's a proto oncogene which becomes an oncogene. <coughs> so I think we are done. What else you want to know about it? Regional metastasis is very common. This also you can write. Then prognosis is good. In the microscopy you will see orphan, any eye, ground glass appearance, papillary pattern, etc. So many variants are there. If you want you can write those variants. Right? It affects females more. Right? It affects females more. It's a very common condition. Asymptomatic solitary nodules, multifocal will be there in gross. You will see cervical lymphadenopathy, laterant aberrant thyroid. These can grow up to 10 cm in diameter. They can be huge. There can be fibrosis and calcification. So they will be hard in the cut surface, grayish white. There can be cyst which will make them papillary cyst, adenocarcinoma. Right? So in the microscopy, you have seen the papillary pattern, fibrovascular stalk will be there, tumor cells, samoma bodies. So you have to draw this diagram. Remember to draw the blood vessels here, okay? Don't forget off. You will draw the papillary pattern and forget the fibrovascular stalk. So fibrovascular stalk, remember there's a lot of fibrosis here, there's a lot of calcification here. So when you cut it, it will be really hard, grayish white, etc. That's all for now. We'll meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.